You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Oh, yeah, we're hitting nice. Kevin, 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 you're listening to Weapons Hot on Sports 4 Radio and the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Charnel fires one into the end zone. It is caught. That's a good touchdown. And now here is your host, CJ, the painkiller, and Kevin Jackson. What's going on, Jets Nation? Welcome to another edition of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast, broadcasting to you live here from Armory Studios here in Central Florida. I'm your host, CJ the Painkiller Simone, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, my co-pilot, my right seater, and one of my very best friends, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for Mr. Kevin Jackson! Look, Jax, how the hell are you, brother? I'm actually doing pretty well, <laughs> considering. <laughs> I can't get, I can't get over the, I can't get over I'm, the I'm, I'm on the water phase of the night tonight because I've had too many drinks. I'm telling you right now. Is that before or after you put the paper bag on? Look, I put the, I put the paper bag on my face last week, and I haven't taken it off. I knew it was coming. I knew we were gonna have this type of weekend. <laughs> I knew we were gonna have a I, I, I tweeted out. I tweeted out earlier that you know I was like Mahomes is gonna have a career game. He's gonna be done in the third quarter. All of that. I just I I come on, man. But 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 he only threw for four hundred eighteen yards. Yeah, and five touchdowns. <laughs> true, true. Only right. Right. Well, right. Hey, well, two of them. Look, this is a, this is a situation now, guys. Where where, I mean, it is. This is this is therapy for us. Um, what else really can we do? The expectation is that we're gonna be bad. Um, and and I'll just be honest. There were there were spots during this game where we actually looked like we might be competitive uh, early on. I mean, even with the field goals, you know, we we kind of were still moving at least a little bit. And uh, you know, then you know the rails come off. So um, I, I'm probably going to try to wear this bag at least until the, the bye week. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll see how it works out. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm excited about our guest tonight, man. CJ, thanks again for uh, for putting this up. Um, man, let's, let's, let's get it in. Weapon hot. Weapon hot to go. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce directly on the bottom here, Mr. B. Swizzle, one of the one of our. Jets fan, uh, uh, let's see, CNC Football Factory, the Jets Factor, and now Weapons Hot, one of our major super fans. Allow me to introduce, otherwise known as B Swizzle. Ladies, write that down in your little black books. Mr. Yeah. Anthony Blankweiss, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, How are you, my friend? What's up, man? I'm doing good, man. How are y'all? <laughs> oh, we are doing good. We're doing good. And now, not to be outdone. Ladies and gentlemen, it also gives me great pleasure to introduce the host and the aficionado, the C, the, the CFO, the CEO, the, gua, the, the guacamole, the mancalamada, everything. All right? He, he, he's the goomba without the goomba from the Snowman in the Morning Show and Snowman Digital Media. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Snow! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't have to wear a paper bag for this, number one. Number two, <laughs> thanks for joining me for the few minutes I have before I have to get busy with my show. But CJ kept inviting. You know what? CJ is like one of my grandkids because he asked me early in the week, and CJ, I mean this out of love. He <laughs> asked me early in the week, you know, I want you to come on. Wait, let me get the right voice. <clears throat> hey, you know, no man. I want you to come on my show. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how you're doing it. I don't care what you got scheduled. You got to make time for my show. You understand that? I said, Sage, I got a business. I don't care what you have to do. I don't care why you have to do it. 
except when it comes to the wife. I understand that, except when it comes when when it comes to that. And thank you for the message the other night when I was um, under the weather when you said go to bed before Dr. K kicked my ass. Right. Well, she came in. I got to tell you this story. She came in and she saw me zonked out. All right. So oh, she no. she climbs in, she climbs in bed and I move an inch because she because she climbs in bed. And my next question is. Are you doing okay? She looks at me. She starts laughing. And she goes, I heard what your friends say to you about you being asleep before I kicked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all, y'all know I kid, y'all know I kid about her. Y'all know I love her dearly. We kid each, we kid each other all the time. Um, KJ, I hate to tell you this, but even though my team is getting their ass kicked, that hat, that, that bag kind of suits you. You gotta wear I'm it like saying. a hat. I'm saying. <laughs> Look, I told you this is this is part of the new wardrobe, man. I'm thinking I'm gonna get a logo like this one. This was like I'm gonna get a t-shirt or something, like a like a jet shirt with the bag head. You remember these things back in the day, right? Like, come on now. Oh, that's that's easy. You take the franchise. That's easy to solve. That's easy to solve. You take a picture of yourself with a with something with a Jets logo on it, put it on a t-shirt, you got your t-shirt. That's how you solve it's, that. It's coming. That's it. It, it's coming. <laughs> so I prom. I also made a promise to CJ that I would do my best George Carlin impression. Yes. Of one of my of one of my favorite lines, and people who um, watch and listen to the show, I've done a lot of traveling over the course of twenty five years, and my favorite routine by George Carlin is flying on an airplane. Well, the which produced this which produced this line. About this time, someone's telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane. Get on the plane. I say, fuck you. I'm getting in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love me some Carlin, man. Yes. Hey, George Carlin prevented me from getting in a whole lot of trouble back in the 90s, okay? That's okay. <laughs> oh, shit. If there's, if there's two things, three, that prevented me from getting a whole lot in a whole lot of trouble between the 70s and the 90s, it's cartoons, it's sports, and a lot of George Carlin. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's the recipe. That's the recipe right Love there. Love it. All right. Oh, so, man. Where, where do oh. you start, though? I mean, <laughs> I mean do, we, do we even want to start at this where point? Where do you start? <laughs> what? No Midnight Miracle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's wow. dirty. Wait. Look, I've seen it all, okay? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen it all. Listen, I'll start since I have the shortest time here, I'll I'll start this because as I said, I gotta leave in about 10 minutes. I, I I gotta leave in about 10 minutes to get my stuff ready for tomorrow. But in keeping my promise to make this appearance, I'll start here. Patrick Mahomes threw for only 418 yards. <laughs> and only. only five touchdowns. Five touchdowns. You should have known it was going to be that kind of day when the Jets got to within fourteen to six and had momentum, and then <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes snatched your souls with a touchdown pass. Yeah. No, it's good. We, we 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 kicked three. We kicked three fucking field goals, so it was good. Yeah. We were in it. Right, <laughs> that, that's yeah. Touch we're that's in it being as a, we're a be. swizzle. We're in it being the operative word. <laughs> <laughs> Three field goals. It seems to be as competitive as we're going to be. Uh, Dow Loggins for head coach, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like fire Adam Gase and, and let's get uh, let let's let Dow Loggins run it. Um, Patrick Mahomes with, with 144 <laughs> passing rating. I mean, he didn't even play the whole game. We got a we had a, a punter. Had a 13 yard pass uh, for a first down. So, I mean, just let's think think about where it is that we are as an organization right now. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if it actually gets any worse. It, it's difficult, really, now to to even focus on the positives because there are so few in comparison to all of the nasty, you know, kind of really bad shit that's going on right now. So, 
I don't know. You're you're right. He only throws for 407 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, Sam Darnold actually had a 4.4 yard average uh, on his passes for today. So I mean, just think about that. that, that was that his average or was that his quarterback rating? Uh, yeah, the quarterback the quarterback rating wasn't much much higher than that. Uh, <laughs> 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 Yards, I think it was 120 some yards. I'll repeat my question Was the 4.4 yards his passing attempts yardage or his quarterback rating? No, the quarterback rating, ran it, my quarterback didn't quarterback do rating was much better. But when you're facing a team like the Seahawks that you split with last year, yeah, we were gonna have and we're as beat up as we are, we're gonna have some problems. Yeah, I can accept that. And I, but I know you Jets fans cannot, I repeat, cannot accept. Let me get the voice together. <clears throat> Going out there week after week after week, seeing this same crap and crap being the functional word. And I don't want to hear any about anything about any scenarios. This was from an old show in uh, 2008. <laughs> I don't want to hear about any scenarios next week. I don't, I don't, don't tell me Buffalo's beating New England, which they did today. Don't tell me that the Jaguars are going to beat the Baltimore Ravens. And don't tell me the Jets are going to beat the Dolphins. Why would I think that? I became such a big fan of Joe Beningo because of that New York accent. And especially I started doing that piece for CJ when I would know he's having a, having a bad time of it and he would do the same for me. But I became such a fan of Joe Beningo and I copied his voice and I think I made CJ laugh till he pissed his pants the first time I did. I did it live <laughs> on the air. <laughs> I think I almost fell out of my chair, to, uh, truth be told. That was, funny. that was funny the very first time I heard that. So, all right. Yeah. So real quick, I want to go over some stats and then I'm going to let Snowman go on his rant over here because I know he's got some cursing. He's got to get out. <laughs> all right. The New York Jets drop another decision to 0-8, 35-9 to to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, so much for a 19 and a half point spread. I mean, at this point, they should have had a 40 point spread because it just didn't make a difference in this game. Patrick Mahomes, 31 for 42, 416 yards. Uh, Sam Darnold, uh, 18 for 30 for 133 yards. Frank Gore, 10 carries for 30 yards. Again, just a joke. Uh, Michael Pirine, again, completely underutilized, eight carries for 27 yards. Um, Chad Henney was three for four for 17 yards. Nobody really cares about him. But the big one, Tommy Townsend, their, their punter. We saw a fake punt in this game, ladies and gentlemen. And he threw an absolute strike, okay, to get a first down, which resulted again in another uh, Kansas City touchdown. So, again, you know, Jet special teams coming up short. And I just see see things from these from other teams that I just wish the Jets would do just once. You know, fake field goal, fake punt. Do something exciting. Can we run the wishbone at this point? Somebody go talk to Tim Tebow. I'm sure he's probably got his thumb up his ass somewhere. Tell him to come back down. Okay. We'll play some four six defense. We'll run the we'll, we'll, we'll run the option. Uh, I'm I'm sure there's somebody out there that can help out the Jets a little bit because right now, Sam Donald just even though today he played a little bit better, he, he still is just I, I, I feel bad for the kid. I, I really do. Because I really think that Adam Gase and Daryl Loggins, they both have the same goddamn playbook, okay? It, it, not once did we see Sam Darnold roll out. Not once did we see Max Protection back there. Not once did we see Sam Darnold, except for that, that nice throw to Denzel Mims, who was another one who was completely uh, underutilized. Let's see, three targets in the game, Okay. Two completions for 42 yards as long as it was a 27-yarder. Why on God's green earth are you not using this kid more? Because he was open. He was open down the field. So, again, you have, uh, you have another scenario in which a week goes by, play calling goes by, and it doesn't matter who's calling the plays. We get about 10, 15 scripted plays that result in a field goal or result in a touchdown, and then they don't do anything in the second half. Five straight three and outs in the second half of this game. 
Although the New York Jets actually did have about 37 yards of offense, which is a great improvement from the four yards of offense that they had in the second half last week. Okay, so I guess there is a little bit of progress, but come on now. I mean, That's progress. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I mean, look, the, the only good thing about today was that we saw nine rookies take the field. Uh, we got to see a little bit of Jabari Zuniga, um, Quinn Williams again doing what he could. But again, you, you saw him double and triple teamed at this time. John Franklin Myers again had a had a, a nice uh, uh, a, a nice blow up of a running play in the, in the backfield. But again, not enough. In the secondary, I'm sorry, Pierre Desir got pantsed at least three different times in this game. So I really don't fucking understand and, why and he's not sitting. Tra- and one of them was by Travis Kelsey after right. a fake punt. <laughs> you know, so I mean, for, for, for God's sakes, I mean, how many more times do we need to see this shit show over and over and over and over again? And I mean, look. Everybody's already talking about the Patriot game, which is next Monday night. I'm sure that's going to be interesting. Believe it or not, the Patriots almost came back to beat Buffalo. Uh, Cam Newton had that critical fumble, uh, which, which pretty much iced the game. That team sucks. Or, uh, anyway. You know, but uh, I mean, look, you know, you're talking about a game now in which you're facing the New England Patriots. They're pretty much out of the out of the conversation for the division. So Buffalo is going to go run away and hide. Congratulations to them. They deserve it. OK, but now you're going you're, you're going to be facing a New England Patriots opponent who now is probably going to be thinking about, hmm, should we tank the rest of the season? Should we not tank the rest of the season? They're now going to start having draft positioning on their mind. OK, so now, believe it or not, Monday night's game actually becomes very important for the New York Jets. So we'll go around the room. Snowman, I'm going to start with you because I know you got a rant coming. We'll we'll go back to Jax and then we'll follow up the rear with uh, Mr. B Swizzle. So take it away, Snowman. I'll keep mine short, and it goes like this, and I'll get the proper voice for it. They could change the coach. They could change the general management. But in the end, it's the <laughs> same shit show that we have been seeing since 1969. It's the same old. Same old, same old. You force a three and out. You get the Chiefs thinking they're gonna punt. Nope, they hit you with, they hit you with a fucking uh, fake. They hit you with a fake punt. Okay, our defense has lagged. Our our defensive secondary. Oh God, don't get me started with the defensive secondary. How much to borrow from my brother CJ here? How much they have been pants all day long by a quarterback that only won the Super Bowl and only won the MVP of the Super Bowl. Okay, you think, you, you think the, uh, they, there you go. You, you think that the Jets would get the idea and say, hey, we got to do something with this guy. We got to contain this guy. Nope, 400 yards. 400 yards. And I did, and I swear he did that with his eyes closed. It's like, you go over here, you go over here, you go over here. And I'll I'll chuck it downfield, and whichever one of you is catch it, which one of you is catch it. The Jets are looking like, what the fuck are we doing here? What the fuck? Oh no! And Tyreek Hill's gone again, and Travis Kelsey's gone again. Really? That just causes me to say to my wife, "What the fuck was that?" Which is how I began to show. Which is how I began to show Friday after the Carolina Panthers laid an egg which is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow on the show. I can't say the 49ers laid an egg. They actually, they at least they showed up playing a superior team with only half of their team due to injuries. At least they got something to look forward to. At, at least some of these teams that have been beat up most of the year have something to look forward to. Although mm-hmm. I'm afraid for next thir- for Thursday night when the Niners host the Packers in Santa Clara and they're looking for revenge and we're just looking to put a team out on the field. But I digress. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck are the Jets trying to do? It's not even say, it's not even tanking that they're doing right now. They're burying their own. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound I needed right there. Exactly. Because they're getting left behind in every single game. And I'll tell you the exact play when the season was over. And it wasn't even the first game of the year. It was the second game of the year 
against San Francisco, a team they had a chance to beat. And what happened the first fucking play of the game? A toss sweep to the right side, and Raheem Mostert, God bless him, goes untouched. And that was that. The season was over. Bury the rest of the schedule because the Jets are going to get buried. And I really, and I hate to say this, and I really hope Trevor Lawrence gets over his COVID, even though he's going to miss the game next Saturday uh, uh, up in South Bend, a game I've been looking forward to because God knows I can't watch this other shit show that's going on with the New York Jets. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have problems. I'll right stop now. there because I got to take off. <laughs> Uh, man, I can tell you, I, I I could just see Dr. K right there. She probably standing in that doorway, shaking her head right now, going, Damn. "Man, you, when I get into when I get into doing my voices, she she shakes her head while I'm laughing because I pick on her when her southern twang comes out, and sometimes when mine comes out, she picks at me." <laughs> she picks it, she picks at me with all my voices. I don't mind, oh, but I, I don't I don't mind at all. Another reason to laugh. Another reason to laugh. Right. Thanks for coming on, Snowman. We appreciate you, bro. <laughs> I love you, brother. Thank you. Thank all you. All right, Snowman. Thanks, man. All right. So I guess you know what? I, I can't. Fuck it, finally, yeah. bro. Oh, oh my god, god. why? Like, it's, it's, it's difficult. It, like, that shit is that it, it's even worse than a mask. I'm mean, gonna keep it real, but <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, the keep wearing the mask, though. Seriously, yeah, look, I, yep, I, do, yeah. Wear mask. I do wear the mask. Yeah, yeah, let me tell you, uh, I, uh, I got something with that that I'm gonna mention a little bit later on, but god, Jax, go and, for it. And I think we should, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in a spot right now, guys, because I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that if we didn't do these shows. Would I even fucking watch the game? I don't know. I'm just going to be honest with you. Catch the highlights, you know, follow Twitter, you know, whatever, you know, little Facebook mm-hmm. and pops and all of that stuff. I mean, you, you're getting the gist of, of what it is that we're seeing on the field, and we're, we're not seeing much of anything. Uh, you, we, we talked about Denzel Mims, three three targets. Um, the, the, yeah. guy averaged, what, the guy averaged 20, 20 yards a, a reception. It, 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 yeah, a, he did. More, uh, per catch. And, and he gets 20 20- wood. 21 yards of reception for the three for the two catches that he had today. And, and, as long and, as it was 27 yards, he was only targeted three times. There up, is guys. zero fucking excuse for that. There, there is none. There is none. And, and then followed up by Brandon Berrios, who had eight targets for 34 yards. Seriously? Uh, look, yep. this is this is it's starting to make me wonder. And I, obviously, I'm not a conspiracy theorist uh, by any stretch of anyone's imagination, but I'm starting to just feel like maybe. The reason why Adam Gase is here is because we are trying to get draft capital and maybe what he's trying to do is keep the rookies from getting hurt so that they can actually still be ready to contribute next season. It's the only thing that makes sense because none of it actually makes any damn sense at all. None of it. Um, we, we, we saw P Ryan come in um, and, and again, to CJ's point, criminally underutilized. Um, and, and why, again, are we still trotting out Frank Gore uh, uh, for 10 carries? I mean, I could see if you're, if you're, if you're giving uh, Frank Gore carries in the third and fourth quarter or if, or if you're going to spell him, uh, you're going to spell Perrine every now and then, P. Ryan, excuse me, every now and again. I can see if you're doing that. But then we, we, still, got the, we still got the guy, Ty, Ty Johnson, um, who, who, again, is starting to look like a guy. He had three carries for 15 yards. I mean, think about think about the 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 position that this team is in right now when we've got young, talented, and probably extremely hungry players right now who are still not actually even getting an opportunity when we see the ineptitude from the guys who have been doing it for years. It's not making any sense. And then I listened to to, to Gase's press conference after after the game. And uh, I'll just be honest. The fact that this guy actually still has a job. He says the same fucking shit every goddamn yeah, week. I'm like so sick not, and tired of having, him, of, 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 of having him speak. It's like, uh, we, have, we have an execution problem. We have an execution problem. Uh, if, the play was, if the play was executed this way, the play was perfect for that scenario. If the play was executed. Oh, we, have, we have to watch the film. And, and you know, after we watch the film, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it was. That's my, that's my fucking favorite comment. Because I swear to God, if, if, what the fuck have you been watching? 
You've been watching film all year. And nothing he's watching changes. porn in his fucking office. He's not yeah. watching film. <laughs> yeah, he's watching Why doesn't he pizza just pizza throw pizza. a giant purple dildo on the fucking field? <laughs> that would probably have a little bit more, more success because everybody would be looking around going, what the fuck is this? I don't get you know, and then somebody might actually be able to catch a ball and run for like 10 yards. Well, speaking of, Chris Herndon, you know, we talked about Chris Herndon all offseason, man. What the fuck is going on with Chris Herndon right now? Like, literally. I mean, is, is, is this is this kind of just how the team is going? Or are we literally Dude, just he's got the fucking yips, this man. Many players just fall off completely. Yeah, I mean, he's, got, he, he, he's got the yips. You know why? Because he's bringing him in to, to fucking block all the time. And then when he finally gets a play where he actually yeah, gets the ball, he's, he's, he's having ball security issues because now he's in his own head. Like, oh, my God, am I going to, you know, am, am I going to fumble? Am I going to fumble? He had two more drops and another fumble today. Yeah, yeah. Look, and 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 one that probably should have been a fumble, but they called it an incomplete. So, yep. Um, look, we 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 have we have serious issues, and I think the only way for us to really address any of them is to to clean house, man. And I mean, I I want to I want to give you know some some level of of something to to sections of the defense. Because we're seeing some of our defensive linemen show up, man. Q is actually looking good in, in, in spots. Uh, yep. Franklin Myers is looking good in spots. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're getting some level of production beyond what it is that we were previously. But, you know, how, how can we maintain this when we're on the field, as, when, we're, when the defense is on the field as much as they are? I mean, you know, uh, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes threw more touchdowns today than the entire Jets franchise has all season. So let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep that in perspective because that really is the level of ineptitude that we're seeing right now. This is this actually is this is the worst football that I can ever re- really remember watching consistently. And CJ, we talk about this all the time. I've been a, I've been a Jets fan since I was young and even too young to really recognize what a fan was. I was following this team, so um, never been a fan of another team. But I'm sick and tired of watching this. It's starting to make me feel like I don't even understand what real football looks like. Because if I watch this team, I'm not watching real football. I'm, I'm watching trash. I'm sick of this. All right, Beast Whistle. You're on the mic. Talk to me. <laughs> As he takes a swig. I'm doing a shot <laughs> after, I'm telling you. Ellis. Ellis. First of all, let me apologize. I am outside the Jets bar, Maggie's in Marietta in Georgia. So I did to get away from all the noise inside. So if you hear a car going by or something like that. No, it's why. all good. Don't worry. But Spotty, you hit it the nail on the head about these press conferences Gase is doing every game. It's the same exact press conference, it's the same exact questions, it's the same exact answers. I, I don't know. I, I, we got we got to look at the film. We got to look at the film. We got to look at the film. We got to do this, this, that, and the other. A funny thing about that, um, I was watching the documentary on HBO, the Belichick and Saban documentary. If you've never seen it, it's mind-blowing the way these guys think. And there's a segment in the show where they're talking about these coaches that are coming up now that are so into the digitalized like age – like the watching, doing nothing but watching film and trying to explain losses and stuff. And Belichick's like, oh, yeah, yeah, this guy saw this film. He said this, that, and the other. And Belichick's, no, the reason why we lost is because we can't fucking tackle. Right. The reason why we lost is because we can't force the run. It's basic, it's basic knowledge. And these new coaches that are coming up, Gase, you know, Gase is not like a new coach, but he's within that new system of coming up with all the digitalized era, with all the films, with all the breakdowns, the analysis, this, that, and the other. And he's so caged by it. Yeah, he's but, so caged by it. The man, it takes him a fucking week to, to watch a goddamn game for so not- on Thursday. Uh, well, well, you know, we still got to <laughs> – yeah, it's, it, hey, it's, Coach Gase. It's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is a classic question. Hey, Coach Gase, could you tell us what you were thinking on that third and four? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, we got to go back and we got to watch the tape. Uh, yeah, well, so we don't watch the tape. How much tape are you? How are you watching this much tape and still doing the same shit every game? Exactly. Here, and uh, you know, CJ, I was talking to you during the game. I was taking my notes, okay? I take notes every game, okay? For, for those out there that don't know, I'm very into this, this sport. I'm very into football. I'm very into the, the mental aspect of the game, the strategy of it. 
I'm sitting here watching this team coming into this game 0 and 7. You're playing the defending Super Bowl champions. You're starting what? They said nine rookies, right? You're starting nine rookies. Why? Why are we doing the same play calls for every single set of downs, no matter where you're at on the field? They're calling the first series I was watching. It was run, good run, good pass, good run, good pass. Sam's moving them down the field, just like the first quarter last week. They're looking solid. And then they get to the red zone, and Adam Gates' balls fucking disappear. They completely disappear. They go for a bubble screen pass behind the line of scrimmage, losses, loss of two, loss of two yards. They try to run up the, they try to, they try to pass up the middle. I think it was to Mims. I don't know who it was. Didn't get caught. Okay, so now you're third, you're third and twelve on the twenty-four yard line against the defending Super Bowl champions. Okay, you've got nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. Fuck it. We should have been going for every damn fourth down. I don't care how far away you are. Who cares? You're starting all your rookies. Get them the game experience. Let's go ahead and show at least the fan base that we're at least willing to fight. You know, all of us are saying, fuck it. Who cares? We're going to we're gonna blow the whole season. We're tanking for Trevor, whatever you want to call it, which I don't believe in, by the way. We'll get to that later about this whole Trevor Lawrence experience. But you're, you're, so you're third and 12. On the 23, 22, whatever yard line against the defending Super Bowl champions. And what's the play that you call? Another bubble screen pass behind the line of scrimmage? Are you, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? It's not even like I can I can justify it like what um I, you know like what I what I believe a, a snowman was that what his name yeah no. well, whatever what he was saying earlier like. I don't understand what they're doing. What is the point of this? Why are we just kicking field goals constantly? Three points, three points, three points. And then gets all the fans, you know, everyone's here at the bar. All, I know all you diehard Jets fans who still, you know, we all talk all, all the crap we want. But when we're close coming into the second half, we're like, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll pull this off. Maybe we will, but I, you're playing the defending Super Bowl champions. Who didn't see Patrick Mahomes throwing for over 400 yards? Who didn't see that coming? That, that was a foregone conclusion, mm-hmm. and the coaching staff needs to acknowledge that. There's, it's like they're still trying to remain this close, this close to the Chiefs going into the second half. Why? 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 Especially when you go into the second half of the game and you're still calling the same bullshit that you were doing in the first half. There's right. no adjustments. There's no, there's no risk. There's no, there's no bomb passes. There's no crazy play actions. It's the same bullshit. It's a bad run by 37-year-old Frank Gore, a bubble screen pass behind the line of scrimmage, and a throw up the middle maybe 5 to 10 yards. Why are we playing like this? What's the point? If we're gonna tank, let's tank going down swinging. Let's show let's show the fan base we want to make this at least a, li- a little bit exciting for the fans still watching. The two of us, the three of us in this podcast that are still watching this terrible team. Yeah. I I see. I don't get it. I, I just don't. I don't get where his thinking is. And and I try. I've tried to listen. I listen to every one of his post games. I just want him to say, you know, the media. They're because you know the New York media. They're, 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 they're hitting them. They're hitting them with questions. Why didn't you do this play? Great, Why aren't you throwing her anymore? Really Why aren't you doing question. this more? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, and, and I just want to see him say, you know what? Fuck you. We're trying. I want to see him <laughs> on the sidelines throwing his headset. I want to see him showing some sort of emotion. You look at Andy Reid a couple of games ago. They're up like 28 to 10. Okay. With like four minutes to go. His team gets a bullshit false start and he's livid on the sidelines. His the face thing is fogging up. His his head, the headset's going. He's he's up eighteen points. You know why? Because he gives a shit. Adam Gase does not give a shit about this team. Point blank. Adam Gase is ready to go, and I mean you, you can kind of tell in every action. But, but Adam Gase has been checked out anyway. Um, Adam Gase isn't. Is, it, it was it was probably the worst coaching hire that we've ever had up until this point. 
And, and, and it, it's actually a microcosm of what it is that we're seeing now in the overall team, just in the fact that we coming into the season, we're believing that Sam Darnold was supposed to be this guy. And, and this, this season was going to be the, the truth um, behind if he was going to be our franchise quarterback or not. And uh, Sam Darnold, to be perfectly honest with you, is entering Geno Smith level ineptitude as far as quarterback statistics are concerned. I mean, just, just think sad to say, but have, have we ever seen uh, Sam Darnold come from behind to win a game? Maybe once, twice. We saw Geno do it five times as a rookie. Think about that. Geno Smith had Geno Smith had probably a worst supporting cast at, at, at one point in time. Um, maybe not necessarily as bad of an offensive line as he as, as uh, what Sam has right now. But I mean, we actually saw spots even even as bad as Geno Smith was. Let, let's just keep that in perspective. As bad as Geno Smith was, we're actually seeing that level. Of 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 head scratching, like what the fuck kind of play was that, or what what throw was that, or what were you looking at, or you can't read the defense. Kind of, we're seeing that from Sam Donald right now, and this is a guy who we honestly thought coming into the season was quite possibly going to be the guy. Um, that is that is a, a a direct result of what it is that he's getting from our our offensive uh, coaches. I mean, if if I want to call them that, I mean they're, they're not fucking offensive coaches. These guys don't know shit about offense. And, oh, and, they're offensive coaches. That's what they are. Yeah, shit. These, guys, these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. And 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 look, it, it's rubbing off on everything else. And we we hear Greg Williams talking about yeah, the defense is is struggling, but I mean we're we're not playing complimentary football because we're not getting the support from the offense that we need. Brent Boyer, who I actually think is probably a damn genius right now, is is still kind of getting you know production from our special teams, even though. I mean, the, the the field position game is horrible for us, be, just basically because of where it is that we're putting three and outs and all of this, and 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 not being able to move the ball and 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 having the ball just so effectively moved against us. This is this is this really this is a, a complete and a total debacle. It's a complete and total breakdown. Um, and as of right now, I mean, everybody's questioning Joe Douglas and what Joe Douglas is doing. But you know, if you see my if you see my Twitter AVI, I think that's what Joe Douglas is doing right now. He's got his head in his hands, and he can't do anything really to affect what it is that we have. But I do see, and I will say this, I've picked that Joe Douglas because I'm, I'm saying, how is he not kicking down Chris Johnson's door and hemming him up? I mean, this guy's offensive lineman. He, he should be, he should have Chris Johnson by the scruff of his neck and shaking his ass in the office. Like you're killing this team right now. And I'm responsible. I need you to give me whatever authority is that I need to get to make this shit change. And, and Adam Gase has to get the fuck up out of here ASAP. It, 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 it's, it's hurting everything, including the draft picks that Joe Douglas has brought in. Right. Spotty, <laughs> Spotty, Spotty, let me let me go ahead and follow up on that. There, there's two things I want to go ahead and elaborate on, okay? Um, the first thing is I can't imagine that Sam Darnold, this high-flying kid out of California, out of USC, is sitting here all right with these, these third and 12 bubble passes behind oh. the line. Oh. I think – Sam Darnold's a team player. I think they're handcuffing him big. I did the, 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 his personality, his laid back attitude, the West Coast style he brings in. There's no way he's agreeing with anything. But he's a team player. He's a good kid. He's not going to go against the coach no matter what. He and nor has he earned the right to do that, like an Aaron Rodgers or like a Matt Ryan or like a Tom Brady. He has not earned the right yet, and he knows it, but it's not all his fault. The second thing I want to elaborate is on the Joe Douglas thing, okay? Joe Douglas has a vested interest in this team going 0-16, a very vested interest. Sam Darnold is not his quarterback. Le'Veon Bell was not his running back, okay? You see where I'm getting at here? We yep. This team has 19 picks in the next two years, four, I believe, in the first round. One of those being a number one overall. I think we've got two or three in the second and then like five in the third round. Yeah. Joe Douglas, I believe, has no interest in this season whatsoever other than us going on 16 and him having the complete reins to completely rebuild this team in his image with his idea, with a coach of his picking. He doesn't give a shit about it. I don't think, I don't think even him and Adam Gase talk. I don't think he even knows who Adam Gase is. I don't think he even know where he lives. I don't think he knows what his phone number is. And he probably doesn't give a shit, as he should. If he really wants to take the reins on this team, he has a vested interest in having as many top draft picks as possible so we can really rebuild this team. And 
I kind of I, I don't want to go too off track, CJ. If I do, go ahead. You can go ahead and stop me. Ah, do it, brother. But I've got I've got a uh, a bone to pick with these Jets fans who want us to tank and take Trevor Lawrence with the first pick. Okay, and I'm gonna say it, and you guys, a lot of you are gonna Bring give me black for it, and you're not gonna want to hear this. Okay, as as big of Jets fans as you are, this team is not ready to handle a Trevor Lawrence. Thank you. This team is nowhere near able to to support that kind of that kind of player, to have that kind of personality here, to have that drive. This team, sadly, is probably two to three, maybe four years away from even being competitive. You don't want to hear it, but that's the that's the God's honest truth. Nothing, nothing in the world. What a factory of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus can come down here and put his hand on Sam Darnold's shoulder, and it will not make this team be competitive. This team needs four offensive linemen. This yes. team needs two to three cornerbacks. This team needs another edge rusher. This team needs at least one or two more wide receivers before Three. we can even think about having a one in the and one in a generational talent as Trevor Lawrence. And to follow up on that, give me another second. If you want any proof of how that works, look no further than our good friends, the Buffalo Bills. Okay. okay? But if you look at their draft history, two to three years ish, as well as af- as when they did and after they drafted Josh Allen. Look at what they went in the draft and picked. They picked nothing but offensive linemen and defensive players before they picked their star quarterback. Look at them now. They have no worries in the world. They're running away with the division, and that's within three years. Exactly. And, that's and, all it and, takes. And, Everybody and, wants the sexy pick. You're not going to get it. We don't. No sexy they, pick. Guys. They didn't even pick. They didn't even pick a top quarterback prospect. If you really think about it, I mean, we talked about that for me as if he was. Like, I'm a man. I'm was, forty. Was, yeah, like he was trash. Like we uh, literally. I, I think I looked at Josh Allen and said, "I can't believe they made that pick." Um, yeah, but, it, it was bar none. Darnold was the better quarterback. Yeah, Everyone look, said so. And, and I mean, C, CJ knows this. I, I I rang the bell that whole. I was, I was like, "Look, Lamar Jackson is going to be the guy." You know, I I don't. I wanted I. As much as I thought I would like for the Jets to have drafted him, I knew that we weren't in a position to be able to support him, but I thought that other teams were. And I'm going to tell you this. Imagine putting Lamar Jackson in that dynamic with Buffalo right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're you're talking about a team that would not lose at all. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How many seasons? Mm -hmm. I mean – to me, just just to that point, though, B, because that's a perfect point. They built a team, and we're in a position right now where we don't even have a – we I, do we even have a foundation to build on? I mean, There's no foundation. Have, we have nothing. There's there's no personality. There's no culture. There's, there's no we nothing, don't have right? the basics. There's no nothing. What, 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 what we do have right now, and, and we have the Joe Douglas, I think that, again, is, you know, hopefully – he turns out to be the guy that we really have been hoping and praying that he's going to end up being. I don't think they, I don't think that, especially with the cast that he has with, with the guys that he has in the front office there with the, with the Hogan's and with, with all those other guys. Um, I, I think we're in a position at least in that capacity to really kind of make some noise as of right now, this again, to your point is a great point. Again, I think this is a lost season. I do think that they've taken it a little too far and how they haven't, they haven't really even supported the draft picks that they brought in. I mean, we did see a little bit of Ashton Davis today, which I think was good. We're still not seeing P. Ryan. We're still not seeing, you know, uh, are we even going to consider seeing Morgan? And why would we well, waste a fourth round draft pick on a guy that's probably never going to play here uh, when we do need, to your point again, multiple receivers? And I thought that we were going to be going wide receiver in the third and fourth round. And and I'm looking back and saying, you know, are Joe, you professional or not? Yeah, Joe Douglas is a guy. He picked guys. He picked he picked you know decent players, I would say. But for what it is that we have going on, this dynamic, this team, I'm not sure if 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 those were the the, the picks that we needed to make in that time. And, and I'm just going to be honest, it's difficult because next season we're going to go into the season as Jets fans like we always do, and we're going to be hopeful. We're going to say, look. You know, Adam Gase is out of here. Whoever the head coach is going to be, we're going to say he does this and this is what he does well. And we're going to hope that he can get it done. We're going to see what Joe Douglas does in the draft. 
Um, it is really seriously looking like the the, the, the number one draft pick is ours uh, for, for the taking at this point. Um, I personally, I like Trevor Lawrence, but I'm a Justin Fields guy. I still think that Justin Fields would be my preference in this situation. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've been way wrong before because I said that we were going to lose a close one to Buffalo and that we were going to kick for the 49ers ass. And I was the hella wrong on, on all counts in that regard. Um, but look, we, we, we have an opportunity right now, again, to not necessarily salvage the season per se, as, as if we, you know, we're going to win some meaningless games, but are we even going to be able to, to solidify the upward potential of the guys that we drafted this last season? because that's going to be really most important. We're, we're seeing, um, you know, uh, Q start to turn the corner in, in his third season. We're seeing, um, you know, some spots and, and some flashes from Mims and P. Ryan. Um, you know, even Ashton Davis at this point, with, with Marcus May going back to the free safety position, we're going to see Ashton Davis start to get some more run towards the end of the season. We are seeing Bright, but we're seeing the Bryces come in. Um, so, you know, those guys I think are going to contribute and hopefully they'll be, you know, part of what we establish as a foundation going into next season. Because again, we don't have one now. Um, we, we, we've got too many questions and, and week to week going into watching all of this, 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 this ridiculous damn uh you know shit show of, of, of a coaching opportunity or or whatever the fuck ever they want to what they want to call it man we, we got so many we got so many you know hold on I, i'll say it the way that that um my mom used to say it back in the day we got we got too many ain't gots right oh yeah because yeah we, spot we got, us <laughs> we ain't got body stuff. you want to talk about why we're not you're worried that we're not utilizing the young guys we have now why aren't we throwing any, you know, big balls to Mims more? Why isn't P. Ryan starting the game? Why are we starting a 37-year-old court running back? You know why, Spotty? You want to know why? Ask me why, Spotty. Ask me why real quick. Please tell me why. Because Adam yeah. Gates don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's you're, why. He's done. Right. He's checked out. He's collecting a paycheck. He knows he won't be here next year. He knows Joe Douglas don't like him. He knows he's done. What the fuck does he care? Yeah. He's sitting there going through the motions. Look at the press conferences. He yeah. doesn't care. He doesn't watch the film he says he watches. He yeah. doesn't give up. Dow watches it. Dow watches the film. And, 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 Dow, and Dow reports back to him. Well, but, 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 well wait a second. Mean? Wait a second. I thought that Adam Gase and Joe Douglas were like the best of friends, right? Isn't this the shit? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. That, that's like, funny. Uh, that Adam Gase. Adam Gase was the one who got Joe Douglas the job, right? Adam Gase. <laughs> no, Peyton Manning got that. Peyton Manning got Gase the job. Yeah. Okay. And and, and, and we know he, got, he was the offensive that, guru. Remember? Peyton hates the Jets. Um, and anybody that doesn't recognize that Peyton hates the Jets should, should, yeah. should, should it, it should be absolutely crystal clear right now that he hates the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> what it is that he did. Look, we we, we we are are we are we really even talking about um what's going on in the field anymore are we really now kind of resigned to talking about what it is that the plans are for next season and going what's the point spotty what's the point when we're watching the same product on the field every day i did i never thought and cj and you know i've been i've been on this podcast numerous times over the years Mm -hmm. cj me and you buddy i never thought it could get worse than todd bowles it's worse buddy it's gotten worse. It's it's bullshit. Why are we? Why are we? Why is this team punting the ball at all? Why? What are you you're saving face? Come what? There's no face to save. There's nothing to save left. There's nothing left here. This team is a barren wasteland of badly used rookies and horribly overused veterans. Yes. There is no face to save here. The reason it's happening, I the only way I can explain it is Adam Gates don't give a fuck. He doesn't. Period. Period. Nope. He does not. I, I, I said nope. it. I said it. I said it. I, what was it, maybe second or third show when I did the spotlight about Frank Gore. All right, and I did a spotlight about Frank Gore because great I'm, guy too. Well, awesome yeah, guy. He's, he's a great guy. But Legend. but in, I, I think that I, my my spotlight was proving a little prescient right now because. Um, I was saying that if Frank Gore is going to be the guy that that you know commands the lion's share of the carries, then we know that this season is lost. And as of right now, Frank Gore is getting the lion's share of the carries. Even when we had Le'Veon Bell here, Frank Gore was kind of still that feature back. That's that that's the guy that that Adam Gase wanted to continue to get the ball to, uh, to 
uh, for three yards in a cloud of dust, or, or as of right now, two and a half yards in a cloud. And three a, yards in a cloud of dust. dust. Yep. Yeah, like, Gotta like, love that. It's, yeah, but, guys, but, but, it's it's so – it's really – I don't, you know, I can care. You know, 0-16, that sounds good to me. Let's yeah. go ahead and let's, let's rebuild this team for real. Yeah. Let's see what, what Doug, Joe Douglas can really do. Yeah. But it, it, I feel for the Frank Gores. I feel for the Sam Darnolds. I feel for the Le'Veon Bells, who by all intents and purposes came to this team and did everything that was asked of him with a smile on his face. He came here. I, I was shocked after his debacle with the Steelers, how he came to the Jets and he took this team on his shoulders. He was Jet for life. That was it. He was J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And look what happened. Look what the Jets organization and Adam Gase did to them. Chewed him up, spitting him out. We're going to chew up Gore, spit him out. Sammy's look like we're going to chew him up and spit him out. It's just, it's so sad to see. The guys out here who are really, really working still, who are, who are really playing Marcus May, playing his ass off, and there's just nothing to show for it but embarrassment, embarrassment on social media, embarrassment on on the networks. Just and speaking of the networks, I wanted I want to comment on a on an analysis that was given during the game today. I don't know who was calling the game for the Jets, but. It was almost like they are always so confused as to what we're doing. And we're down, I don't know, we're 35 to 9 or whatever. And we're and it is a minute and 17. Let me look at my notes. A minute and 40 seconds to go. And we're like 50 yards. We're on the 40. And we're sitting there doing halfback dives. And we're still running the ball. And they're like, I, I guess, you know, they're just, you know, looking for something to build on for next week. What the fuck? There is no next week. There is no next week. What next week? Like we got even if the, the terrible ass Patriots. Yeah. What are we gonna build on? Yeah. What do we have? What a run of three yard play yeah. down thirty five to nine with the a minute. Case, for, how do you build on that? There's the nothing to build on us. here. The best case scenario for us is to get the first round pick. Uh, get that number one pick. And have like the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars, you know, be in the third slot or something like that. I, I, no, I'm I'm just gonna keep it real because we know that the Jaguars need a quarterback. Um, we know that you know Lawrence and Fields are gonna be one, one, two, possibly. Um, right. And if if, if the, you know the, the the reality is, is that you know we trade back with the Jaguars and we still end up with uh, with Justin Fields, but we also get all of the picks and that gives Joe Douglas an opportunity to do even more of what it is that we think that he needs. that that to me is like the best case scenario for us. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right. So. It's alcoholic beverage time. So first, <laughs> because Kevin wasn't here last week, yeah, we got to raise our glass to Kevin. Happy belated birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on three, boy. two, one. Ah, thank smooth. you very much, guys. I really appreciate ah. that. Um, another year of uh, another year in the books um a really disappointing year 2020 is by far <laughs> probably wait <laughs> I, I, I wait i got more i gotta read you some of these comments and first of all i want to say a shout out to everyone who's currently watching live who's interacting with us on the stream Thanks, shout guys. out to scott Clesby who of course, is just completely blowing up the scream. <laughs> uh, 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 he, he always does every single week. I love this guy. I really do. Um, uh, he, he sent over a comment. Adam Gase looks like the head coach on the water boy. Yep, he does. <laughs> so uh, Sam has never had an old line that hasn't been in the bottom five in the league since he's been here. He's true. He's right about that. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Jardine. Um he actually had a question for all of us here really quick that I want to, um, that I want to ask, uh, how do we, how do we get everything we need with a questionable quarterback about to be very expensive? So hold that question in your back pocket for just a moment. As I go through all of the, uh, all of these over here, shout out to Ryan Barger, uh, joining the show. They still need to maximize value on the guys they don't plan on keeping in the instance of a trade whether it be by the deadline or right after the season okay. so mm-hmm. and then uh he just dropped on another one alcohol poisoning has started 
Uh, absolutely love it, of course. So, uh, uh, shout out to Mike Thomason. Um, uh, he, 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 actually, he actually asked the question, why are we running the ball down by 26? Your yeah. guess is as good as mine, because I guess maybe this is the best I got in their fucking playbook. Because Adam Gates don't give a fuck. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> Scott Gillespie chimed back in and said, McGovern looks like a matador out there. He's, he's a swinging gate when teams pass rush over him. Yeah, I think we could accomplish the same thing with the traffic, uh, traffic cone or a rain barrel. Look, um, we should have kept Jonathan Harrison. We should have kept Jonathan so, Harrison. We, we got better play from Jonathan Harrison. We really yep. did. Yeah, we, 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 we really did. Now, as uh, shout out to Jimmy Jardine. I want to go back in the comments here. He actually uh, was talking about um, uh, B Swizzle over here a, a little bit in his con- in, in his comment to um, fans that are like happy for the tank. So he does not agree with the whole tanking theory. Neither do listen. So, neither do I, buddy. I don't yeah. want it. I don't want it to happen. I want the team to be competitive. I wanted to – I came into this game tonight wanting by all intents and purposes to win. But when you're down oh, – Yeah, you want to like go that, in every game to win. Yeah, absolutely. But it gets to a point with this team, especially in the past couple of weeks, you get – you're down – you know, you're up – first of all, you're up 10 last week. And then by the end of the third quarter, you're already down by 20. So at that point, what am I cheering for? I just don't see this team – having a chance at winning a single game this year Mm -hmm. if we did if our coach went ahead and they gave us a a little shot in the dark a little bit of hope a little glimmer of light i'd be all for it okay i was i was cheering for every fucking win when we won we went three and 13 i was i was cheering for every five and 11 i was cheering for every win okay but you're at the point now where we're, we're at a crossroads where this team needs is to build as much draft capital as possible if we want to have any any success in the future, buddy. And, but um, I'm, I'm, gonna give you guys, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to give you guys a little factoid, and then um, I got a question that I want to swing around uh, to all you guys. Do you realize that the 2020 New York Jets right now offensively are on pace to actually be worse yeah. than the 1996 New York Jets team that went 1-15 coached by Rich Kotite? Oh, yeah. Now I did hear that. I did hear that tonight. They, they were talking about it during the game. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, Anthony, I got to tell you, you know, I, I I don't know if you remember that '96 team, but uh, I I I know you were talking about, you know, hey, it can't get any worse than Bolds. Let me tell you, at least on the Bolds, even with a stripped down roster, it still had they they really did not have very many games in which they were getting blown out. Yeah. So uh, I think that Todd Bowles using John Morton as a scapegoat was completely inappropriate mm-hmm. and not needed whatsoever because I think that Sam Donald would have benefited from having John Morton as an offensive coordinator his rookie year instead of Jeremy, I spent the past five years in a banana hammock on top of a fucking mountain Bates. Okay. Yeah, no, no, CJ. No, I don't remember that because I'm 29 years old, so I was five years old, still <laughs> shitting in my diapers. But the uh, shit in my diapers was worth more than Adam Gase's coaching career. <laughs> <so funny. laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I've, I've heard the stories, and I can definitely – I mean – It was bad. You yeah. say you can't get uh, – it, it's – I just don't see any any up, upwards trend of this team at all for the next, you know, eight games. I, right. I, I really I think mean, that – that if anything, really, if there's if there's any type of silver lining that Jet fans need to hold on to, and then I want to segue into a, in, in, into our uh, next segment, is basically that look. The, as long as the rookie the, this year's rookie draft class gets an opportunity to go out there and play, an opportunity to compete, that's what you want to see. Because, you know, it, it's like ridiculous. To, today was the first day we actually got to see Jabari Zuniga on the field. And even in some stints, I was like, why is Greg using them this way? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we, we're we going to see the, the uh, 2020 draft class start to be a little bit more matriculated within this lineup. Yeah. Now, I think at this point, Adam Gase's offense has been ineffective. Daryl Loggins' offense in the past two weeks has been primarily ineffective. Thank you. I think personally – Give Jim Bob Cooter a kick at the can. You've got absolutely nothing to lose at this point. 
my my question is, are we using the same playbook? I think well well between between Adam Gase and Daryl Loggins, yes. Yeah. I, yes, I, they I, are. And, and, and that's, yes, that's, they are. In my heart of hearts, they both have the same the, the same playbook. That's yes, they are. They're both trying to jam both trying to jam that square peg into the round hole. That's the I could, I could break it down play by play, buddy. For sure they are. It's it's the bubble pass behind the line of scrimmage and it's the jet sweep and he cuts to the outside and he cuts inside and go gets no it's the same plays and then they're every now and then they'll throw an out route and hit somebody out right there on the sideline. Are, are we seeing the offense literally be be focused through the slot receiver first? I mean like eight 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 targets for Barry. No, Lewis? no, they're 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 trying to run the offense off off the run game and there's no run game. Yeah. So when they when they start getting behind there's there there's no see the problem is with the with this team is when they start getting into a rhythm the defense starts catching up like they do in like like in all of the games they start catching up and then once they start picking up on what we're doing like every time when we get into the second half of the game like last week we were up 10 got in the second half of the game and completely blown out they start seeing what we're doing it's it's rush passes up the middle and then once once that starts getting blocked, they start doing some sort of creative things like a jet sweep to the outside inside. Like uh, it's that creative that I can sit there here and call it out by name and by play. That jet sweep know it's coming. No if I know it's coming, it's if, like, come on now. Dude, if, if, I'm, if I'm seven beers yeah, in hey, and I know it's coming, there's hey, a problem. Let's run a, let's run a jet sweep while it's cover zero. Exactly. Hey, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and what 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 what, stands when, out to me, what what really does stand out to me? And and I mean, you you guys obviously we're 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 recognizing, you know, the deficiencies in that. But Brandon Berrios was, was has eleven targets today. I mean, Berrios has more targets than Frank Gore has carried. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So to to me, it's just uh, yeah, which, which I'm, I guess I recognize why Crowder was actually doing what it is that he was doing, but. When, when again, when, where are the adjustments when when we don't have those guys in? Brandon Barrios getting eleven targets, like mm-hmm. seriously, that, that, uh, that, that's exactly that, that's exactly what I'm getting at. Uh, there's they, the defense figures out they've got they've got us on tape. They've got they've got our game plan down, and by the second quarter they figure it out. They start stuffing the run, yeah. they start stuffing the run. And they know exactly what's coming, and there's no adjustments. There's no offensive adjustments at all. There's no difference in playmaking. And by the time we, we look down at our watch, we're down 20, 30 points. Yeah. And by, at that point, the run game is completely out of the question. Completely out of the question. And what, once the defense has you there, there's no, re, there's no reason but to just blitz every play or just play it, play inside zone underneath coverage and pick Sammy off. There's just – and then our de- – I'm not going to – I hate to – let me know if I'm jumping on you guys, man, because I, I don't want to go ahead and you – know, but – I'm not going to let the defense off the hook either on this game. Yeah, okay. okay. No. There's the no reason. The There's defense no... has been absolutely porous. And, and absolutely. the problem is that you and I have actually had this talk both on the air and off the air. And I've always said that the defense has always had to carry this team. And the problem is, is that one of these days, the defense is going to get to a point where it can't no longer carry this team, where the offense is going to have to start picking up the slack because the defense is exhausted. And again, we're seeing for probably the 10th year in a row, the same shit that we always have. New York Jets defense is on the field for 60 to 70% of the game. They're exhausted. They can't stop a beach ball. The offense can't put points on the board. We're settling for field goals instead of being able to get, instead of being able to get touchdowns because of unrealistic play calling. All right. On a third and two, when you have an offensive line that's practicing zone blocking and their zone blocking is as porous as a basket with holes, okay, you cannot expect a draw play on third and two to work, okay? Your only hope is to maybe roll out, maybe try and get somebody on a quick slant, maybe get a sideline pass or something to that effect. The problem is, is that the Jets are not forcing the ball downfield enough because – we are constantly fixated on get these bubble screens. Let's run Frank Gore into the ground for two yards on a cloud of dust. Yeah. Run the fucking wishbone if you're going to do that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? And it, it, it comes to my point earlier about – and, you know, I'm not an NFL coach, 
Okay, I've been watching on football my entire life. All right, I also for all for all you I play a shitload of Madden. Okay, <laughs> so I, I I I I've I've been playing long enough. I I know enough people. I played the game myself. I was a I was a middle linebacker. Okay, in high school. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm no I'm no Monte Teo. Right. Okay, <laughs> but I know enough about the game to figure out we're not going to win this game. Okay. This we're not going to beat the defending Super Bowl champions. We're 0 7. So against the probably the Legion of Zoom, probably the greatest passing offense of our generation, maybe coming close, maybe the Seahawks, yeah. but far none. Patrick Mahomes and and the new the, Legion the of Zoom. Yeah. They are they are they are the best. And they are an air attack. Andy Reid doesn't give a shit. He's going to bomb that ball no matter what the situation. Oh, why Why is this team playing a zone over top coverage for half of the second half? What, what, why, why are we attacking? Where's the pass rush? And no, I'm not saying where's the pass rush as in where are the pass rushers at. Why are we rushing three to four guys? Where, where are we bringing corners in to try to get to the quarterback? Where's the creativity? Where's the where's the desperation? I it's this it seems like we've given up on offense, and then once that's done, we give up on defense. And there's just there's I know Greg Williams is a hell of a defensive coordinator. I can't imagine that he's not being. Well, I don't understand why he's not being riskier when there's really nothing to lose in this game. Especially when we have the questions about the player personnel at this point. I mean, we're, we're, we're recognizing that Adam Gase isn't using some of the guys, but Greg Williams is also not using some of the guys that we would have expected that he would also. Like, I mean, the, 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 the questionable substitutions, the, the guys that we really feel like we need to see play that aren't being given an opportunity to play I mean, it, it, it's not limited to what it is that Adam Gates is doing on offense. It is also, you know, Greg Williams is doing some of the same stuff. Like, um, is is Jordan Jenkins uh, even still on the team? I mean, don't, we don't see that guy anymore. The Zuniga, some of the new guys, yeah, we're, we're not seeing those guys play. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to now recognize how, you know, Huff is coming in and doing what it is that he's doing. But again, still not enough to really say that these guys are being, you know, ushered in to, to be the, the foundation that we need. We're not getting it. And, and when it does come to, to cleaning house, I do think that Greg is no doubt on the chopping block as well. Adam Gase, Dow Loggins, and Greg Williams, I think they all at this point have, have let me say, equal roles uh, in, in, in how bad it is that we are. But, I mean, there's certainly a whole lot of blame to go around. And those guys really are the most, the most high profile um, because they are the ones who are responsible for what the final product is. And the final product is shit. It's been, it's been so bad. We... we <laughs> We, we, we have we have we have right now more questions now than we did coming into the season we had hope coming into the season I mean we, we really we, we, we talked yeah, we about did. earlier and I, I remember I, I, I saw a couple of tweets and all of that earlier where we we're talking about the, the the biggest um question mark for Adam Gates this season was how he was going to be able to manage this coaching staff right um and now that is not even that's not even on the radar the coaching mm. staff, it, it, it means nothing. None of what it is that he's done has given us anything solid to stand on. I mean, we don't even know what these draft picks are looking like right now. I mean, look, just, just now, the past couple of games, we're starting to get some of those flashes. But is that going to transition into now Denzel Mims being targeted, you know, uh, over the course of the next eight games? Is he going to get 70 targets? Mm. We doubt that. But we'll, we'll see Berrios get him. Are we going to see Mims get him? Berrios probably might not be here next season, or or, or maybe you know I, I would question why would we want to bring him in or, or bring him back? Excuse me. Um, they're, they're talking about now. Are are we going to trade Crowder? Are are, are is 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 Quinn and Williams on the trading block because he's one of the only pieces that we have that actually would qualify any draft capital being added to to, to the mix. I mean, we, we're in bad shape. I'm sick. I'm so sick of this shit, <laughs> bro. Uh, let me let me. Dude, let, let me tell you, man, yeah. there was last season, you know, we were ass terrible for the you know mo majority of the year until the, you know, the last few games where we were playing garbage teams yeah. and we were able to pull out some wins here and there. And I went to all my friends. I'm like, listen, this team on paper has gotten better, 
there's no possible way we don't at least win seven games. And I remember from last season, the one, one big bright spot on defense for the flash in the pan that it was, was CJ Mosley and the way he played yep. I think it was the game against the Bills where he was just all over them. I'm like, this guy can play. Yeah. And the second this season, when I heard that CJ Mosley was opting out, I knew, I knew, I'm like, there's no possible way. And then Jamal Adams was just icing on the cake, which yeah. he, which his, which his ass needed to go. His ass needed yeah. to go. Okay, yeah. I'm, I, I don't care that how good that, that's coming from the Mo Wilkerson days too. Yeah. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit how good you are. You start talking shit like you are on social media like that. Yeah. And you start, you know, going, everyone's like, he was Mr. Jet. And for you to completely turn around your, you know, your entire outlook like that within months. I mean, I don't care how shitty your coach is and how bad your coach is, like Ace is. There's no reason to do that to your teammates. So his ass needed to go. But yeah. when, when he, when, when, when we went ahead and traded his ass for a pretty good, for a pretty good sum, I got to say, that was a good plus in Joe Douglas' part for the, for other the than, you know, King's than ransom than we got for his ass. Yeah, but when that, when he was gone, that, that I all hope all hope is lost for this season. And McDougal trash too. So I mean that that that's something else. So we, yeah. we did get a haul. We did get a haul. I, I look. I think Jamal forced his way out. I think he did that on purpose. He did it purposely. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it was it was it was way too far over the top for him to just be that type of a guy. That that's just that's just how it seemed to me. Like he's he's doing the most, you know, to try to get out of here. But it it, it it's honestly it 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 shows I think the recognition of how bad he kind of saw this situation being and you know for for all of what it is that he did wrong and and he was wrong he was 100 percent wrong no doubt um i think i think he did it on purpose because he was trying to get away from the shit and it and it worked and he's in a much better situation now obviously but but again it just kind of tells you how how bad organizationally is we are right now um to, to to think that we have our very best players willing to damage their brands the way that they have in order to leave here, that means a lot. I mean, we, we talk about this all the time. There's 22 little small businesses on the field every time, you know, the ball is snapped. Um, and those guys, I mean, every every play, it, it, that's, that's, you know, that's their production. That's how it is that they're judged. Um, Jamal Adams is an all-pro player. He needed to get the hell out of here. He needed to get out of here. Um, I think there's some of these other guys who don't necessarily have that same type of capital who also may feel the same way that he feels, but can't put themselves on the line like that because they don't have, you know, the ability to move the way that they would want to move. Um, at this point, I think there's probably, you know, how many guys on this team that wish that they were in other places? I'm like, I, I, I know, you know, especially with, with, the, with the deadline coming up here, coming up soon and, and us needing to kind of add some, some, some capital the way B was talking about just a minute ago. Um, who's safe right now? I don't think there is anyone safe. I, I think we may actually see some names that we're not expecting go places for maybe fifth or sixth round picks. Um, but those fifth round, those fifth or sixth round picks, if you stockpile enough of them, they turn into fourths, they turn into thirds. Um, and third and fourth round picks for Joe Douglas or for a guy of his caliber and for a staff um, that that is as good as what it is that they are at, at you know, picking guys in those places. Um, I really can possibly see us maybe adding how many uh, players to this this uh, this mix over the course of the next few seasons. And, you know, maybe 2023, we are looking like. Hey, watch out for the Jets, man. I'm just the, the problem is, is that we're, we're having to go through this in order to get that, you know, we, we talked about, you know, being patient and all that. And I, I said this before, CJ was talking about the, the, the reason why the Jets fans act the way that we act is because we're so hungry, right? That Snickers commercial, it's another unfortunate side effect of hunger. We're, we're out of sorts. We're out of, we're, we're so completely out of character right now because the bullshit. Another side effect of game. So Dude, it's 50 yeah. years that we've, that, well, exactly. that we've been hungry. But exactly. actually, so that but means we're starving, right? We're starving, which makes it even worse. Be, we're starving and everybody say oh yeah you just got to be patient you got to be patient and I, I, again I, I said a couple of seasons ago you know maybe you know we, we need to have patience now more than more than any and then it just got worse and now it gets it's getting worse now and again I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself like now we've got Joe Douglas now we've got this 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 uh this uh, this general organization in place and is now the time where we really need to have the most patience because we know that he brings a certain level of respectability to that position. He brings a certain level of pedigree to that position that none of these previous guys had. Isaac was what, like our sixth, fifth or sixth option? Uh, Mike McCagnan, who, who 
they, they should still do a 30 for 30 on that damn do, that damn draft. Uh, with, with oh, man, Mike. That, How do you go draft a whole that ass team and that would fire be the, the guy? Best 30 for 30 ever. It would be the best 30 for 30 ever because none of those guys you know, really, really did shit in the league. Some of them were actually didn't, weren't even in the league after, after preseason. So, um, we, we, where do we go now? I mean, should, should we just stop doing shows about games and just start, you know, should we start just doing draft analysis now? I mean, let, let's, let's, let's start there. Well, really quick, what I do want to talk about is, is the fact that we do have the uh, trade deadline coming up really quick. Uh, you are listening to Weapons Hot, uh, New York Jets broadcast on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports War Radio, Snowman Digital Media, and quite frankly, any place that you get your broadcast fixed. CJ, the painkiller, D. Simone here. Spotty Blackman on the other side of the glass, joined by special guest, Mr. Anthony Blightweiss, otherwise known as B. Swizzle. So um, really quick, what I, what I want to talk to you is we'll, we'll actually start with uh, we'll start with Kevin on this one and then we'll go uh, we'll, we'll go back the other way around. Um, and I really want to know uh, if, if you could name five guys right now that you could see on the trading block being traded. Uh, this upcoming Tuesday, which is what the trade deadline really is, you tell me who who the five guys you could see getting traded. You know what? I don't think anyone at all is safe. Not one person on this team, other than maybe uh, Makai Beckton, is safe. You know, then the, the, you know the, the, the rookies that we we just drafted. All of those guys, I think, are safe. But uh, let, let's get Pierre to here out of here. Let's get him out of here ASAP. You know, Brian Poole, who who I think still has some tread on the tires, but, uh, you know, as of right now, it's difficult. I think he probably can go. Um, if we would possibly be any, be able to get anything for Bradley McDougal, um, I would I would trade his ass right now for a, a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and, and, a, and, a, and a, you know, and a, and a soda. Um, there's, 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 I wouldn't say that we should be trading. Uh, we shouldn't be trying to, you know, get rid of any offensive linemen because, we really don't have any good ones. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can't just bring an offensive lineman in at this point in the season and expect that it's going to get any better, even though we do need four more of them here. Even, even now we just spent all that money on McGovern to bring McGovern in and he's, he's trash. He is trash. Hot garbage. God, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of that, but, but, but even more to that, um, Jamison Crowder, I think Jamison Crowder might actually be on the trade block. I don't, I don't know. Um, how how stable his his uh, position is right now? But if we're talking about being able to you know get back um, you know uh, some reasonable draft capital, I mean those are the only guys that really make any sense. Um, if we trade Quinn and Williams, I'm gonna tell you right now, I think that would be a huge mistake. Um, I would think at, at at some point maybe we might even consider trying to move a tight end, uh, possibly just because. You know, the guys that we have there, they aren't really doing anything. So, you know, I don't know, man. It's it's difficult to qualify that question because we really don't have any players that are worth shit right now. And the ones that are, um, you know, they're untouchable. We 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 kind of don't look, we're not trading, we're not trading our, our all pro, you know, left tackle. We're not trading um, you know, the, the wide receiver that we just drafted is a stud. We're not trading any of those guys. And those are the only guys that are actually doing anything that makes it worthwhile to watch the team. So I don't care who else goes. I, I really, I don't give a shit who else goes. As long as it's not Quentin Williams, as long as it's not Makai Becton, as long as it's not Denzel Mims, as long as, you know, and I mean, even even to a certain extent right now, and, and, and feel me on this, um, depending upon what draft compensation people are willing to give up for Sam Donald. Yep. Deuces. Um, mm. and, and, you know, I was a Sam guy. You know, I, I kind of still, I, I feel like Sam has the ability to be, you know, a, a, an upper echelon uh, a talent. And, when I say upper echelon, I don't mean maybe top five or, or something like that, but the kid has the ability. I think being in the right situation, um, a la uh, Josh Allen uh, in Buffalo, I think if you send him to the Steelers, he balls out next season. I think if you send him, you know, I, I, I think he'd probably be a better, uh, you know, uh, situational uh, football quarterback uh, in, 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 uh, in San Francisco next season. Um, there, there are a few different places. I mean, look, Jacksonville Jaguars are a horrible organization right now, but I think that if, you know, if they, if they play their cards right, they can actually, you know, play well. And Gardner Minshew right now isn't necessarily doing what it is that we need them to do, uh, that he needs them to do down there. So, I mean, who knows? There are, are a few different situations where, you know, I think that guy could probably step in and actually play decent ball um, over the course of the next couple of seasons. So um, to add Sammy to that list, it hurts a little bit, but I think realistically, I think he deserves to be on it. 
Yeah, I completely agree. You know, um, uh, our good buddy B Swizzle, his phone died, so he's actually uh, uh, just sent me a text message from his girl's phone. Okay. Um, want to thank him for joining us. Great All day. right, so really quick, really love to have him back. Um, did want to go over some uh, comments really quick that we had on the show. Um, <laughs> shout out to Jason Capel for turning in, for tuning in. Robert Williams, uh, Robbie Malofchek, uh, everybody who's over here, including Jason Rhodes. Jason Rhodes has actually been a little bit active on the on the timeline. Want to get a get we'll get his comments on. Jason, uh, I, miss, I miss you, buddy. <laughs> So, uh, first comment he dropped was maybe ask Sam, uh, maybe ask why Sam didn't target Mims the whole second half. That's actually a really good question. I'd like to know the answer for that too. I think, I think that's Mims two catches, three targets in the first half, wasn't even on the field for the second half, but that's on Gase, not. Uh, no, that's actually on Loggins and the play calls because he should have been telling Sam to look for him. Uh, to answer his question, the one responsible for this is Mac. Come on, man. Now you blame Greg. Adam's gone. CJ out. No cornerbacks. But this one is on Greg. Bullshit. Greg, Greg, Greg did uh, a lot with with, you know, bubble gum and, and duct tape last season. So, I mean, the the, the personnel is, is kind of there. I mean, we, we should be a little bit more competitive. But, you know, again, I don't want to give him a pass. I don't think he deserves a pass. Um, but I also don't think that he's actually coached as well as he coached last season either. And and there's a regression by him just as well as there's a, reg- a regression in the talent that we have. So another comment that he dropped was maybe it's because some Jet fans set the expectations too high because they don't understand football. No such thing as expectations as a Jets fan. If you have expectations as a Jets fan, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and then when we were talking about trades, he said trade Sam for a taco. Maybe Maybe, maybe a five-layer burrito. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit more than that <laughs> look if, if somebody offers us a two and, and a player or something for sam i think sammy's toast man i think he's out of here <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's yeah but i mean look I, I, as far as i'm concerned in regards to um the new york jets and everything that's going on with them okay you know, as long as the rookies can get some play and we can kind of see what the um, what the future holds for the players that we have coming up, especially in this 2020 draft class, we got to see nine of them today. Hopefully, we start to see a little bit more Cameron Clark. We start to see a little bit of improved play in the offensive line. You know, maybe they start getting a little bit better. But look, this, this team, regardless, is going 0-16. And for me, I kind of agree with uh, with Anthony and his thoughts where at least go down swinging. At least if you're going to die, die with your boots on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for me at this point, Daryl Loggins, his offense is proving not to be any any better than Adam Gase. It's, it's really Give Jim Bob offense. Cooter a kick at the can. Yeah, it's really not his offense. And, and, and I'm, I'm interested in seeing what Jim Bob would do. Um, but I think that, you know, you, you, we kind of need to, to focus on that when maybe there can be a little bit of an install for other plays. And I know that Jim Bob Cooter has, has you know, he has a pedigree. He has, uh, you know, has some success on this level doing what it is um, that Dow Loggins and Adam Gase have, have so miserably failed at. Um, but, I mean, Sorry, being boys. able to install, a, a, you know, some new aspects to an offense, I think that that does take a little time. Um, and if we're going to do that, maybe around the bye week, I would actually hope that it happens at that point. Do we really expect that Adam Gase is going to be fired? I don't think anybody does. Do we hope and pray and, and beg and, you know, light incense and, you know. Yep. <laughs> All kinds of the other shit. Right. To get his ass out there. Then, uh, yeah, I think that we do. Um, look, Dow Loggins and, and Adam Gase, is, it's the same offense. There really is no difference in, in the offense. It, it really now is more that um, we have uh, – a different viewpoint on calling the plays. But right. I'll just be honest, the reason why the, the, we even the reason why Dow Loggins even has a job is because Adam Gase, you know, uh, lets him do what it is that he do and, and you know when, when they go through the their little uh uh you know uh, game planning sessions uh, throughout the week. And uh, again, it's it's proven, proven not to be effective at all. 
either one of them. That, that we, I'm so sick of talking about these guys, man. Seriously. <laughs> so, so, all right, real quick, Jason actually has another comment that I want to that, that I want to put out there. Funny, you all turn in the head coach and the DC. Yet when a player sees shit firsthand and calls it for what it is, just like you all do, you say screw him. Maybe it should be screw the fans that are just like that. I, when I said I said just a minute ago, Jamal Adams did that for a reason. Jamal Adams saw what was coming and he did everything in his power to get the fuck away from it. Yep. He was right. Yeah, maybe he did. He was right. Okay, 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 Jamal Adams, okay. Don't be sitting here talking shit to, for, for a year or two now about how big you are, how you love New York, how you love the Jets, how you're good, you want to be a Jet for life. Don't be talking all that shit. And then when shit starts going downhill, your ass is high telling it out of town. Okay? That's the problem with that. There's no loyalty in it. Ask Mo Wilkerson. His <laughs> fat fucking ass. Went sitting here gang coming into camp 45 pounds overweight. Come on, man. You talk about come on, man. You talk about doing everything you can to come get out of town. You got Mo Wilkerson out there eating 10 hot 10 cheeseburgers coming into OTAs. And he didn't need to say anything. All he needed to do was show up with his big tits and the and his ass was gone. Okay, Jamal just did it with his mouth. That's the only difference. I got I got no be loyal. Be loyal. Okay, that's all we ask of you. If you're if you're loyal to the team, if you give your ass out every single day on the field, Jets fans will love you. They will love you. We still love Mark Sanchez. I don't give a shit that the butt fumble, how bad he was. That kid played his ass out. Okay. If you're if you're gonna come here and you're all you're gonna do is talk crap, try to get a payday. And then you want your the second shit starts going south, you want to hightail it out and do whatever you can on social media to try to get out. We ain't got no love for you. We ain't got no love for you. That's hard. That really be is a hard. man. Well, be I'm a man. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real. I think he did everything. You know, in this first in those first few seasons, I think he did everything that he was supposed to do. I mean, he was friends. We loved him. Everybody loved him. Everybody, you know, he was the face of the franchise. And then I think it just got to a point where he recognized that, you know, what the fuck? This is not what it is that it's supposed to be. This is not what I was expecting. This, you, you guys are not even keeping your word as an organization, not only just to the players, but to the fans. The organization shits on us as fans. They shit on us as fans, which means that, you know, they don't, they don't give a shit about the players. Obviously, they're not paying anyone. How many of our, how many of our first round draft picks ever really make it to the second contract? None. <laughs> None that I've seen. Just, just literally think about that. The last, the last one we saw, um, and to, to Ann's point, we're talking about Mark Sanchez and all that. They gave Mark Sanchez that horrible ass contract, and then they stripped the team butt naked around him. Yep. What mm-hmm. the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Look, I'm telling you right what now. What are you doing? Un, 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 until un, un, until shit gets better, expect to see this fucking bag every week. Period. <laughs> I might just have to make me one of those. I'm telling know. you, I'm gonna I'm 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 get my shit bedazzled and get the fucking jets and the whole shit. On, I'm 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 getting ready to trick this shit out because it's gonna be. Con- <laughs> look, I might I might have to call Chapo. I might have to call Chapo and see <laughs> if I can get. Hey, listen, we'll, 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 we'll all get a bag. We'll all get a bag to wear. Want right. to say butt fumble one, two, and three yeah, on each one of them? Right, exactly. Oh, so, really all right, cool. really quick. So, uh, we only got a couple of minutes left before we have to. Uh, you know, skedaddle for this evening really quick um anthony i want to hear your thoughts what's one player that you think is going to get traded for the trade deadline one player one player <laughs> one player you got a list you got a list no, um, i mean look i know you got a list this long who's at the top of your list that's getting traded you ain't gonna like it and i don't like it as much as the next guy does marcus mm-hmm. may Damn, don't say that, man. You know what? I, I know. I, 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 yeah, I told you we weren't going to like it. Tell me another player on this team that's worth the shit. Yeah, none, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're don't not going to like it. You ain't going to like it. And, and <laughs> he might come with a up. nice little hefty sum, but and I don't want to see it because I love him too. Yeah. But with the way this, the direction this team's going in, I, I don't want it to happen. But, it, but being the Jets, it's going to happen. And hopefully we'll get a, a good King's Ransom for it. It ain't going to be nothing like Jamal, but yeah. we might get some. We might be able to sneak a second or something out of it. But 
I don't. And now I'm not saying that I want to. Yeah. Let me reiterate this. I, I don't say that. I don't agree with it. I do not agree with it. But I, want to I think in. honestly, teams are out there are looking for defense. Okay, we don't have anybody, anybody on offense worth the shit. Okay, they're not. They're 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 coming. That they want to poach our defense. They want to poach Marcus Mays. They want to poach the Quinn and Williams. But I think Marcus May, with, with as much intangibles as he has and experience in the league, I think I think he's gonna be toast. Sadly, Lord have mercy. I didn't even. All want right, to Kevin, you're up. I didn't want to speak that shit into existence, but I mean, I think he's absolutely right. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the only players again that we, you know, can expect to receive any kind of, kind of compensation for are the players that we can least afford to lose. Um, so you know, we're gonna have that conversation. It, it are, are are the the discussions about um, what Sam is gonna qualify? Um, are those things gonna be just too difficult to pass up? Um, especially knowing that if we get rid of Sam. We are guaranteed the number one pick. We are guaranteed the number one pick. Period. There's point blank period. That's a wrap. Um, uh, does 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 it matter to the to you know the owners? Does it matter to the GM? Does it matter to anybody else? That uh, as soon as we do that, it, it is immediately recognizable that we've done this purposefully to get to to go for that number one pick. I don't think it makes a difference. But um, Sam is on the block. Uh, you know, again, like I said, uh, some of uh, the, some of the um, I, Avery Williamson might be on the block. Uh, who knows? Um, you know, again, as, as long as they're not dra- they're not trading any of the rookies, or even Quinn and Williams, I would say at this point, um, I I don't think anyone else is safe. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, the I have three names that I could see being traded. Number one, Marcus May. Definitely agree with you guys that. The, there is some as much I would actually cry if Marcus May got traded because I love Marcus May followed him ever since he was in college was super happy that he got drafted by the Jets now, I, it would it would break my heart if he got traded but I could also understand for the long-term future number two Avery Williamson Pittsburgh Steelers have had a couple of linebacker injuries I wouldn't be surprised if they came calling so and number three, believe it or not, would be Brian Poole. I could see somebody calling uh, for Brian Poole. Poole has actually had a pretty decent season despite how porous the secondary has been. Yeah. So two honorable mentions that I'm going to throw out there. Jamison Crowder, who, although he's battling injuries this year, has probably been the New York Jets' most consistent receiver. That is period. Okay. And I'm going to throw another Anybody name out there. Guy. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm going to throw another name out there. Neville Hewitt, believe it or not. Neville Hewitt that's is amazing. somebody who I think that they add to a linebacking core that could probably, you know, give them some good, not only second down and third down play, mm-hmm. but also some good uh, stuff on special teams. Okay. So those are guys that I have my eyes on during the trade deadline that I think could quite possibly be moved. Now, that being said, then the be all end all. So, and I got to give Jason Rhodes credit. You know what? Because we had an episode during the year talking about Sam that we just needed to build an offensive line around him. And he criticized the show and I went after him. You know, I, I got to give him props and I, and I come up here and I say when I'm wrong and you know what? (laughs) I've been on that same train. Yeah. Me and you have been back and forth on that same train, CJ. Yep. Me so, and you uh, have been, I've been there. Eat that so I, I just think that this was the year that we needed Sam Donald to take that step forward. And regardless whether you want to blame it on the offensive line, you want to blame it on the offensive play calling, you want to blame it on the lack of weapons around them, there's, there's a ton of excuses that you can go into the excuse bucket for. But you know what? I think the excuse bucket has run dry for Sam Donald. And I think that personally, I think here in New York, the only way for that kid to to save his career is for him to get the fuck out of here. Period. And I hate to say it, but I'll tell you something right now. And I know last week we had our good buddy Lon Siegel on, and he seems to believe that all the tea leaves, everything that he's hearing that Adam Gase is going to be coming back in 2021. 
And if that's the case, I don't know if I want the Jets to draft Trevor Lawrence because I think that that might be the single biggest deal breaker that will cause Trevor Lawrence not to want to come to the New York Jets. This is my plan, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to spell it out. If Joe Douglas is smart, like Kevin said earlier in the show, you grab Christopher Johnson by the scruff of the neck and you tell him, I want this fuck out of here. (laughs) Okay. It's time to let go of the meth head. He's got to go. All right. Once he does, you let Joe Douglas pick his coach. You let that coach pick his staff. And then you let that coach make the determination whether A, they want to work with Sam Darnold because they still believe that they could salvage this kid. Or B, they want to draft another quarterback in which you either get Trevor Lawrence or you get Justin Fields. Plain and simple. Yeah, let's face it. You don't have to... You don't have to wrap your head around it. I don't want to close the book on Sam Darnold. I still think that it's too early to close the book on Sam Darnold. But as Jimmy Jardine in our, um, you know, in our comments had said earlier, the New York Jets will have more flexibility with a quarterback on a rookie contract than having to pay a potential question mark a minimum of $25 million a year. And I'm not sure if I'm willing to part with that, still not knowing exactly what Sam Donald is. So, and I know that this goes against everything that I've been saying over these past weeks because I love Sam Donald. I want him to be successful. I wanted him to be successful as a New York Jet. I still believe that he can be a top 10 quarterback in this league. The problem is, is that the New York Jets failed him. They failed him from the moment that he walked in this fucking door. They failed him with Jeremy Bates. They failed him with Adam Gase. They failed him. They are currently failing him with Darrell Loggins. And God knows who the fuck else is going to be calling plays on this team before year's end. (laughs) <laughs> they have failed this kid. They have. Mm-hmm. And you know what? As much as I admire this kid for being a team player, as much as I admire him for every single week going on the Michael K show on 98.7 ESPN radio and having to answer those questions in which you hear him every single week, take the responsibility on his shoulders that I have to do a better job of playing I have to do a better job of doing the reads. I have to do a better job of getting these play calls out there. No, Sam, it's not all on you. Your fucking offensive line is trash. Okay. And I'm sorry, but the guys who Joe Douglas brought in, I know that analytically they may be great because of their PFF grades, which seems to be the new analytics of football. But I don't need the Pythagorean theorem to tell me when a fucking offensive line plays like shit. I can see it on Sunday. And the mere fact that you've got three, not one, not two, three attempts to your rookie wide receiver. Ooh, we need to get him chemistry, chemistry with Sam Darnold. That's the most important thing. The fucking kid was invisible in the second half of the fucking football game. What do you expect him to do? Sit on the side of the boot, sit on the st- sidelines with a fucking erector set? Hey, let's build some chemistry. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing over there? Oh, seriously. <laughs> God damn. You hold Stop that in it. for a little while. Uh... Yeah, epic, epic rant, man. Stop it. Stop it, you meth head. Put the fucking crack pipe down. Stop it. (laughs) For two years, we've been trying to jam the square peg into the round hole. Tell me, guys, has it worked? Because you know what I see? I see a total of seven wins in the past two years. And you know what? This fucking season still isn't over yet. We're at the halfway point. We still got another nine weeks. We still got to look at. Plus a bye week. 
It should be really interesting to go through. This is going to be a long year, buddy. It's already a long, <laughs> it's gonna be a long already. year. At this segment of Weapons Hot, sponsored by Alcoholics Anonymous. If you are a New York Jets fan <laughs> and you have a very serious alcohol problem, contact your local sponsor for assistance. Alcoholics Anonymous, we care about you. Operators are standing up. <laughs> Operators are standing the fuck by. <laughs> right now. Look, uh, look just there's, there's there's really no way to to, to, uh, end, to be honest with you. I mean, just, we're in bad shape. All right, so you know what? We're gonna just end tonight's episode. Listen, listen. Podcast. But wait, Anthony, if, if anybody, at, Anthony. If if anybody needs, you know, the sound bite of the night besides the alcohol anonymous uh, <laughs> uh, ad we just put up. There's only one thing to say, guys, and you could probably see it coming, okay? Adam Gates don't give a fuck about this team. I know. Adam Gates doesn't give a shit about That's himself anymore because even, no. even his, his, his reputation doesn't mean shit if this is the best that he can do. That's reputation. He's never going to get another yeah, job after the season. It's, he's done. Somebody, <laughs> he's so done. Like, oh, he's going to be the guy answering the alcohol <laughs> anonymous hotline. I mean, just think about that. For somebody that has an ego like that, to not even give a shit. If, if, I mean, come on now. He done. Done. Uh, done. All right. <laughs> so, as done ladies as and gentlemen, we're going to end tonight's episode of What's Hot and New York Jets Side Truth. <laughs> I can't even get the fucking cutscene right. As Kevin Do you not give a fuck up. anymore? <laughs> we just don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight's episode of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fans broadcast. I would like to thank every single one of you who turned in live, who, who interacted with us on the chat, um, who, who decided to watch but didn't interact with us. Those of you that are rolling over right now, I'd like to thank our special guest, Mr. Snowman in the morning, Brian Snow, for jumping on for a little bit to get his stuff out. Mr. Anthony Bitewise, otherwise known as B Swizzle. And give out your social media information so fans of Weapons High can follow you, interact with you, troll you, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just Twitter, at B-Swizzle. Uh, you can find me on the No Fly Zone Radio podcast every once in uh, two years on the Facebook. I'm, I'm, all, I'm on Facebook, on No Fly Zone, New Era, our team, the New York Jets. I'm all over the damn place. You want to contact me, I'm always available. <laughs> that is good to hear. And it's good to see you, my friend. And good, you thank too, you so much for joining us tonight. You, you too, buddy. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow the show on Twitter at CNC Jets Factor. You can follow me at JetsFan0523, my partner in crime on the other side of the glass, Mr. Kevin Jackson, otherwise known as at Spotty Blackman. Ladies, be sure you're writing that down in your little black books. Don't forget to shoot the show an email, weaponshoppodcast at gmail.com. We do have a Facebook page. Don't forget to check us out there. Our content is up there. Like us. Message us a message right back. We love going back and forth with Jet fans about this team. Also, leave us some feedback about how we're doing here on Weapons Hot. Because the only way that this show can get better is when we get feedback from you, the fan. We love you guys. Shout out to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. That is our home, 24-7, 365. Don't forget to download the app. It's available on Google Play. Available on Apple. Download the app. You'll be able to catch Weapons Hot every time we go live. And not only that, you could also catch past episodes going through that as well. Don't forget to look out, look us up on Sports War Radio. www.spreaker.com forward slash Sports War Radio. And of course, SoundCloud.com, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcast fix, wherever you get your broadcast fix. Every Sunday, every Sunday night, 7 p.m., rain or shine, whether the Jets win or lose, we are here with the alcohol, talking our beloved New York Jets. And, man, it's just been tough. It really has been. But we still continue to do it because we love you, the fan. That's right. We do. We love you guys. And we thank you for your support. And without you, we are nothing. So, for Mr. Kevin Jackson on the other side of the glass and Mr. Anthony Blightweiss, otherwise known as B. Swizzle, 
This is CJ, the painkiller D. Simone, signing off here from Armory Studios here in Central Florida. We will see you guys. Let me see you guys. Peace, love, go Jets. And we're going to leave you tonight with still, in my opinion, is the best chant in the National Football League. If you haven't voted, vote. November Wear your masks. <laughs> Wear your fucking masks. <laughs> yep. Or, or Wear get, your masks. Get a bag. Vote. Or get a bag. <laughs> <laughs> or get a bag. Get a bag. <laughs> get a bag. I can't. Oh, my God. All right. Be safe out there. Love you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Peace, love. Go Jets. Have a good night. Talk to you hey, soon. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.